I am a prayer brought to you by DigiKey. This week it's ST. Lady Ada, what is the new product introduction of the week this week? Okay, I'm glad you asked. This week from ST, we've got this awesome battery monitoring system based on the the part number it's the l9963e which is the new generation of their more popular l9963 battery monitor and balancer and this is an automotive grade battery pack management system and um you know i don't know how many people who are watching the show are creating their own cars but there's definitely people who are doing e-scooter projects or go-karts or micro mobility or they're working on uh hacking or modding um you know wheelchairs or other um, devices that use big battery packs. And so um, having a really good quality battery management system, something that normally would be only sold directly to automotive companies, you can now get it from DigiKey. So um, this is the chip, uh, the L9963E, um, but we're also gonna be talking about the eval board because the eval board makes it a lot easier to use this chip because there's a lot of pins and a lot of components that you need. So first up, um, you know, the battery in the car that you have, if you have an internal combustion engine, is just something that drives like the stereo and the headlights and, um, you know, the blinkers and stuff. It isn't something that actually runs the car itself. And these batteries are, you know, basically usually 12 volts lead acid batteries. They're big, they're heavy, they last, you know, like a decade almost. Um, they have big lugs and they provide, um, you know, just the positive and negative terminals um, that you connect to your battery, your internal combustion engine charges the battery and then you know that's why if you let it sit and it eventually self discharges you need uh something somebody to give you a jump to get started um but if you have an electric vehicle um there is no internal combustion engine because instead you have this gigantic battery pack and the battery pack is what drives the uh motors that are connected to the wheels there's no engine there's an electric motor instead and you can't use a lead acid battery because it would be way, way, way too heavy and it's not energy dense enough. Instead, you're gonna use um, lithium ion battery cells, uh, much like this. This is kind of a standard 18650 cell. This one has like a blue plastic coating and a cable connected to it because we stock it. Um, and then, you know, these are, this is a kind of a standard size, um, often made by companies like Panasonic and, and Sony. Uh, in fact, when we, um, we went with DigiKey to visit Panasonic, they're like, yeah, you know, a huge amount of our business is selling electric vehicle batteries. And you can put these in packs. In this case, this is a parallel pack where you have three cells and you can kind of see the three cells parallel connected uh, to give you larger capacity, but the same voltage. And in an EV, you're going to have strings of batteries that are then parallelized. So you put, you know, a bunch of cells one after the other to give you about like 48 volts, although that number may vary. And then those strings are parallelized to give you a lot of current. And then the battery packs are just like enormous. Um, the thing to deal with with these batteries is, you know, first off, the energy density is very, very high. And so you have to safely charge them and discharge them. And you also have to manage the battery life. Um, you know, the batteries are, when they're fresh, they have a huge amount of capacity and then they slowly have less and less capacity. But ironically, you don't want people to think that you have more capacity than you've got. Like you want to kind of have the capacity be like some standardized. You also don't want to overcharge the battery. And so as I was reading about this, I learned like, oh, you actually like charge the battery a different way based on the aging of it. Um, and that's one of the things that a battery management system will help you with. Um, so the uh, most important thing is to manage the current going in, current going out, and the voltage across each cell. Unlike the lead acid batteries that are used in internal combustion engines, you have to monitor individual cells because you want to make sure that they, you know, there isn't one battery that is charged or discharged at a different rate. And as the batteries age, I mean, when they're first made, the packs, they try to um, test each cell and ma match them all up. But just over time, temperature, you know, variations, uh, each individual cell, the one of the thousands in a battery pack, is going to act a little bit differently. And so to do that, to, to manage safely having a battery pack, you have to make sure that each one doesn't get overcharged. Um, and so you have to uh, balance them to make sure they all have the exact same state of charge and same voltage across them. So, uh, you know, this is like a diagram from the um, presentation that ST has. Um, you can see as the uh, batteries get discharged and the cycles keep going, the more they're disbalanced, 
the more the capacity is affected. So you really want to make sure like you don't overcharge the good batteries, you don't undercharge the bad batteries. And to do that, we have a passive charge uh, discharging balancing system. Uh, so it's active and passive. Active is a lot more expensive. Passive basically just means that when it's charging, a little bit of current is drawn off of the charge rate. And um, that makes it so when you monitor the battery, just making sure that as it gets close to the 4.2 or 4.4 volts, uh, you know, the high voltage for the constant uh, constant current, you know, max charge voltage, um, you might activate one of these internal FETs that will drain off current um, and slow down the charge rate of the really good battery so it matches the worst battery. So basically this means that when you're charging, the charge rate is going to be as slow as the worst battery in the pack, but in the end, you get like a perfectly balanced uh, cell and it you have better battery life overall at the cost of slightly longer charging. Um, chip is kind of complicated. You know, I didn't read every register. Basically, you um, need to connect to every individual cell. So on the left-hand side, there's all these like internal FETs and connections and you need a bunch of passes to sort of carefully monitor each battery cell. Um, there's also a bunch of temperature monitors you can connect, which is important. You want to make sure that when you're charging, uh, you monitor every other battery or so. So you you don't overcharge based on if it's too cold or too hot. You have to change the charge rate. And then um, you can see like it's it's pretty pretty complicated board. Just why I actually recommend the eval board, because for like 40 bucks or so, you get everything and it's ready to go. Another thing that's interesting, oh, this one is, yes, yeah, shows the eval, eval, uh, eval board. So at the bottom, there's a port you can connect uh, it's up to 14 in. They're parallelized here, but they should be serialized. And the isolated communication is interesting. So, you know, obviously you've got this very high voltage battery monitoring system, and you want to make sure that you charge the battery safely, but also you want to make sure that that 48 plus volts doesn't feed back by accident into your low voltage electronics. And also, you know, there's a lot of current moving around, a lot of EMI. To make sure that the battery protect the battery management system is protected um, from itself and your microphone is protected from it, it uses this isolated SPI interface. And so what you see USB ports up there, they're not truly USB. It's a USB mechanical connection, but it re really is using a differential isolated communication protocol um, that uses SPI over this differential set. And there's a separate board that you'll have to get to use this eval board that will con convert your standard four wire SPI into the ISO SPI, just FYI. Um, and this just shows the um, interface. Uh, so yeah, you have um, fully isolated communication between each board and they can be daisy chained. So if you have multiple battery packs, you just chain them together over this four wire uh, isolated interface um, and you can address each one. We did find a library. The chip is fairly complicated, um, but we found that there's a cool student um, electric vehicle group that published a library on GitHub for STM32 chips. Um, so check it out if you want to get started with this uh, chip in this board. Again, I recommend getting the eval board, um, but you can quickly query it, ask it about like the state of charge, tell it how much you want to um, balance or debalance. Um, everything is like CRC and, um, you know, isolated and protected. So it's like, a, again, it's an automotive grade solution, but you can use it for making your e-scooter. Available at DigiKey. It's in stock. Yep. So that means you can buy it. You can actually buy it. All right. That is a sweet sign API. Hi, I'm MPI.